Thursday Thunder mm. on a Wednesday. Yeah. Adrian. What? Yes. <laughs> to ask, why are we woe from this on a Wednesday? Wednesday because right? tomorrow is Anzac Day. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So um, everything's closed. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we thought we'd film it today and then uh, on Friday I'm leaving for Europe. Yeah, that's why we can't film it on Friday. Yeah. So are you going to do Thursday Thunder? No. Did, away? did you do Thursday Thunder when I was when I was away? No. Did, you tried, didn't you? I and did set up the camera awkward. once, and I can't talk if there's nobody here. <laughs> Maybe grab someone to just sit with me. Yeah, just watch you. I did that last time, didn't I? <laughs> with Cliff. I, just... I was going to print a picture of your head. Oh, that's not creepy stick. at all. No. <laughs> Slowly going insane. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yes. so yes, but this will be most probably out, you're viewing it on Thursday. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Um, did I tell you I'm going to Europe? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> where about are you going in Europe for people who don't know where you're going? In, where uh, you going? I am going on, I'm going to Copenhagen and then going on a two week Baltic Seas or Baltic Cities and Norwegian Fjords cruise. Mm, sounds fantastic. For 14 days. 14 days, and you, you, I did, you did mention that you're not at sea for 14 days, you do port No, 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 we have a lot of stops, so um, it's just about every day you're in a different city, yeah. or then in a fjord or whatever, so mm. yeah, um, look I like cruising, but I, be, I don't like being stuck on a cruise ship for yeah, days at a time. you'd be, you get stir crazy. Yeah. yeah, what's good about cruising is you get into your room, you unpack all your shit, and then you don't have to worry about packing up again for another two weeks. That makes sense, yeah. And, but, the reason we chose this cruise is because it it does just about every single day you're in a in a different city and you get off port and you spend six to eight hours in that city That'd be good. exploring or then when it goes to the fjords it does the same thing it stops for the day and you can go on boat trips you can do fishing trips and fishing oh there we go it's weird but one of the things i've always wanted to do is try fishing for sturgeon in russia <laughs> but apparently it's illegal is it? Yeah, because the sturgeon there are, are worth so much money and they'll poach. You watched a show called River Monsters. I love that show. He went sturgeon oh, fishing. Yeah, he, had, he caught like these sturgeon that were like eight feet long. Yeah, it was like 190 years old. Yeah. He had to get special uh, permission from the government. And he yeah. was like, you can only hold it for five minutes and then let it go. That's right, yeah. And yeah. What, what is it allowed to take it out of the water? So they were in the water holding it, but this yeah. thing was like eight feet long. Yeah. That's what that, that I saw that. I'm like, I want to do that. That sounds, that seems cool. Yeah, but Russia is if I can go sturgeon fishing. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Australia, I want to go sturgeon fishing. Anyway, so yes. Um, we'll just hold that video there, Ari, and we'll come back to it. And we're back. Did I tell you I'm going to Europe? <laughs> no, please tell me more. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I'm going to Europe. Yes, I know, I know. Yeah. That, that little face at the end. Um, all right, what's happening in news? Well, I found out on the weekend, mm -hmm. and like you did, that uh, Aussie Josh is competing this weekend. Yes. And I didn't know nothing about it. No, I mean, he kept that really quiet. He had. I did notice that the week before, he mm. was at the Arnold Classic Brazil. Yes. At the Black Skull booth, because I think that's his new sponsor. Okay. And he looked really lean. And I thought, oh, he's competing in the Arnold Classic Brazil, but yep. he didn't. But he's no. competing in this show, and this show is aptly called Big Man The Big Man Weekend. Sounds good. It's in Spain. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, I'll just quickly go through, we got, uh, in the lineup, you got Eddie Bracamontes, Rafael Brando, James Hollingsworth, Kenneth Jackson, Mahmoud Kafi, Danny Kaganovich, Josh Lenanovich, Essa Obiad, Andre Presti, Eric Ramirez, Ram, Ramirez, Ramirez, Akim Williams, and Miha Zupa. Now, a lot of people go, I haven't heard any of these, but some, these, this, this is actually a fairly strong line. Yeah. There's some good names in here, uh, uh, and winners of past pro shows. Now, the main danger to Josh is James Hollingsworth, mm -hmm. or Jolling, Hollings Head from Britain. I think he's only done two or three pro shows. He hasn't done anything. A lot, but this guy's a monster, like yeah. a really big dude. Um, and then Akim Williams, who in Brazil um, competed at the Arnold Classic, and he came second, I think, from yeah. memory, second or third. Um, and he was sort of getting better with every show that he did. Um, whether he can hold it on for a third show in a row, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I think the top three will be Josh, James and Akeem Williams. Uh, in which particular order, I don't know. Obviously we want Josh to take it out. Look, we want Josh to win. And the, I think this is his last... I think he has now hinted that if he does not qualify for the Olympia, he's shutting down for the year. Okay. Because he's done three shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is his last chance and he needs a win. I don't think he's got enough points. No, he doesn't. No, yeah. no, no. no. I mean, second might get him enough points to qualify, but I don't think so. He really needs a win to hone it in. Uh, the other one is Rafael Brando, uh, the Brazilian guy, who's not a big dude, but no. he looks really just yeah. spot on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think he's big enough to win this show, but he'll be right up there as well in that top four. So that's on this weekend. Mm -hmm. So good luck to Josh. Yep. Um, Couple of other things. Uh, what's been happening in the stores? We had a guy come in yesterday. Uh, this happened at Sal Salisbury. Salisbury. Jason yep. told us where this guy went along and started freaking out because his protein powder had soy lettuce in it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something we've touched on many we've, times. We've touched on this before. And if you have a look at just about every single whey protein, yep. will have soy lettuce in it. Yes. And it's added in there to stop foaming. Yes, an if, emulsifier I think it is. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. yeah. It, it stops foam. If you didn't have soy lettuce in your whey protein and you mixed it up in a shaker, it would turn to air, virtually. Yeah. Like it would just turn into a massive amount of frothy bubbles. Mm -hmm. Now the soy lettuce is added into your whey protein to stop that from happening. Yeah. And the amount that's added is minuscule. It is literally a spray yeah. over a vat. If you have a look at the ingredients list, Soy lettuce is right at the end. Yeah, so yeah. they they usually just mix in this giant vat and it's going. Yeah, and that's it. They don't yeah. like into every powder. They go oh teaspoon. No, mix it in. No. no, and like I said, it is there purely to stop frothing, and it's not going to affect your anything, anything. estrogen levels yeah. and everything. Like this guy was freaking yeah. out. So. Um, uh, I know we've touched on it before, yep. but just reiterating that about the soy yeah. lettuce. That is, a a is lot of good. companies are now hint, look, looking at the fact that people don't like seeing soy in protein, so yeah. they're using sunflower lettuce than now, which is the same thing, yeah. uh, just not uh, Jason soy. said the ironical thing with this gentleman was that he was carrying on about the soy lettuce and, and he had, you know, drinking a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong no, bad no. with coke either. But yeah, you know, it's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. <laughs> no soy though, which is good. No, exactly right. But they are made in yep. a facility that has soy products. Mm. Anyway, moving right along, yeah. our next topic. I've seen some interesting test results. Mm -hmm. You know, you see all sorts of um, test results, double blind results, yep. and 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 the reason I picked out on these two is because there's a lot of talk about it always on Instagram and social yep. media. What's yep. better and what what's yeah, you know. right. So this is this was a study done um, by B D Carpenter, mm -hmm. um, and it was comparing. Um, Losing fat, if you want to lose fat and gain muscle, what's better, a high diet, protein diet, or a low protein diet? Yep. All right, so your goal is to, to lose fat and try and gain muscle. Which one, which diet should I adopt, a high protein or a low protein? Yep, okay. All right, so the study was, subjects were randomly assigned to consume a higher or lower protein intake during a weight loss phase. All the meals were provided to the subjects to help ensure compliance. Mm -hmm. Both diets were in a 40% calorie deficit. So they worked out their maintenance calories yep. and put them on a 40% calorie deficit, which is actually a lot. Yeah. No, like Jesus. Yeah. So it's nearly half of your food being taken away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, subjects were re uh, recreationally active, but not regular resistance trainers. The subjects then performed a combination of resistance training and high intensity interval training. Yep. Now, I think you and I straight away are gonna know what's, what the results of this yeah, was. Yeah. But in, in general, the results, weight loss was similar between both conditions. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that, that shows you so. that a calories in versus calorie, that calorie deficit is gonna cause a weight loss. Yep. Um, but more fat mass was actually lost in the higher protein condition. Mm -hmm. So, while weight loss was similar, that means the low protein diet people most probably lost some muscle yep. as well as um, body fat. All right, while, while lean body mass was retained in the lower protein condition, 
the higher the protein, the higher protein intake actually saw an increase in lean muscle mass. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, so while they were in a calorie deficit, the higher protein diet uh, continued to lose body fat, but and actually builds muscle. muscle. Yeah. Yep. Um, now your reasoning okay. for the fat loss. <clears throat> okay. So. With everything when it comes down to dieting and nutrition and that, there's something called the TEF or the thermic effect of food. Yep. Now, the thermic effect of food is when your body, you eat food, your body uses those calories to actually assimilate said nutrients. Yep. Um, have you ever heard of the something called the meat sweats? Yes. Have you ever eaten too much meat and it's yeah, like, okay, yeah. I'm full, but I'm sweating? Yeah. That's exactly Ronnie Coleman sweated like a bitch yeah. when I had dinner with him. Yeah. That, and he ate two giant steaks. That's exactly what the thermic effect of food is. But it could be also the massive amount of ephedrine he said he was good for you. Anyway, oh, Gary. Yeah. Okay. Could, be, could be a whole bunch of things, but let's, just, let's focus on one. <laughs> okay, so now with the thermic effect of food, there is obviously broken down to protein, the carbohydrates, and fats. Yep. Um, protein by weight is around for every for every hundred calories you maybe cons your body will use around thirty percent of those calories just to assimilate the nutrients. Yep. From carbohydrates, it's anywhere from ten to fifteen percent. And for this is what I find most uh, most interesting on fat. It actually you actually can your body will use anywhere from 0.5 to 5% of those calories just to assimilate it. Yep. Because fat is insoluble in water. So this is just proving the fact that higher protein can actually help you burn more calories at rest. Yep. And look, I think it's us in our industry have known that for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, but there I have seen the arguments that you don't need to be in a, a high protein diet. Mm -hmm. But I, I think this is just another yeah. proof that a high protein diet is essential, I think, yep. if you want to maintain or even build lean mm -hmm. mass and lose body fat at the yeah. same time. If you don't, if you want to try, oh, I'm too muscular, I need to eat less protein. Look, there's a, there's a couple of things here which, <coughs> which I think sort of play into um, the results. Because you know, what they're saying is that you can effectively build muscle and lose fat on a 40% yeah. calorie That's deficit. That's ridiculous. Over, that... Which I think is really high. But the, it says that the, the, the subjects were re recreationally active but not resistance training. No, they've never... So I think if you grab anyone off the street who has never weight trained and put them into a resistance training program, initially they're going to, I think they're going to build a little oh, bit yeah. of muscle, doesn't matter what they eat. No. Nah. Noob so, gains. Yeah, I think so, because your body will just respond to that. Mm -hmm. But um, it has shown that done right, you can possibly build muscle yeah. and lose um, body, uh, lose fat. Oh, definitely. On, on a calorie deficit. Yeah. And um, Adam Dowling points that out mm -hmm. a lot, that yeah. you can actually build muscle. And you hear about guys like growing into shows yeah. when their diet gets so tight and so regimented, high in protein, and they're training really hard. They're actually growing into the show while they're losing weight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was interesting. Um, another one which I thought was interesting. This may ruffle a few feathers, maybe. Well, look, I'm not doing it to ruffle feathers. No. Because I, I thought it was just interesting. Because it was, um, it was a meat versus plant diet and then the effect on inflammation and inflammation markers yep. in the body. Yep. Now, a lot of people, uh, vegans, will say that meat is inflammatory. Yep. Yep. Um, and that inflammation can cause all sorts of problems, joint problems and mm -hmm. things like that. So this, this is a recent study. This was 2019, so it's this year. Yep. Um, and you had 37 participants who were divided into two high protein groups animal protein and plant protein. Uh, the authors measured several inflammatory biomarkers and weight. Now the results, both groups lost weight. Yep. So that tells me that they were in a calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, that's just, they lost weight because they were in a calorie deficit, nothing to do with what they were eating, yep. the total amount of calories. But uh, what was interesting uh, was the pro-inflammatory pro markers, which are the adipokines, cameron, and progranulin, uh, that's what they measure for yep. is, as uh, inflammatory markers, decreased in both groups and with actual no discernible difference between the yep. groups. Discernible, so at, at face value you can't take it. Yeah, you yeah. can't, no, nothing you that can't really turn around. And the results here show that there's actually, 
the, the graphs are virtually identical that mm -hmm. I, I, I can't tell that there's a difference. Yep. Um, so, but what they realized was that uh, if chronic inflammation decreases, mm -hmm. weight loss happens a lot more effectively. Yeah. But meat is not pro-inflammatory and it can actually reduce mm. inflammatory markers. There you go. So there you go. So that was interesting. Not having to dig at anyone. No. No. <laughs> Anyway, before we move on, we'll yep. just quickly uh, wrap it up because I'm going to Europe. Yeah. Where are you going in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just now, we talked about it last week that our Australian Muscle website had had another yep. slight makeover, uh, and that is all now fully 100%. Um, running and you would have seen that with the amount of net orders I did oh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's australiamuscle.com.au. Everything is, uh, all our products are on there. Free delivery nationwide, no minimum purchases to get that free delivery either. So go check it out. If you can't make it into any one of our locations, if you order by one o'clock, we will generally get that order off to you. And in, if you're in a close proximity to the Adelaide metropolitan area, in a metropolitan area, there is a good chance that you will receive it that afternoon. Yep. Like yesterday, I sent out about 20 or over 20 orders, and I got emails and messages back from about 10 of them saying that they delivered it, got it that afternoon. Beautiful. So. Congratulations to our courier drivers, who sometimes can be a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's all up and running, so check yep. it out. Uh, also in store now is the new Syntha 6 Cold Stone Creamery flavor. Yes. So, Cold Stone is an ice cream company in America, yes. is it? Yes, so do you know Cold Rock? Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, yes. yes, so this is actually a collaboration yes. uh, between the Cold Stone or Cold Rock Ice Creamery in America and BSN to yep. bring up um, amazingly nice flavours. The flavours are really nice and there's, there's three of them at the moment but I think they are going to introduce more yeah. with this company. So yep. what we've got, I've got um, uh, the, it's mint, mint, chocolate, chocolate chip. Yeah. So, chocolate uh, mint, but it, it, this is a really nice chocolate mint. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah really yeah. nice. It's got that nice minty flavour without being overboard, and the chocolate is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, the other flavour is there's a birthday cake. Yeah, birthday cake remix. Yep. And I and have what do you I want? have German chocolate kaki. German chocolate cake, but it's written in German, which makes it even cool. It's got oh, like it's actually written. In it's German. got like a thousand umlauts and German chocolate cakey. Yeah. Oh, so don't. there's that. I'm um, going to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> but that's in Europe, isn't it? <laughs> On my European trip. Yeah. Take this with you. Okay, so this is um, <laughs> pretty much these. Uh, a bit higher in calories. Yeah, all right, look, look, we can do a quick review yeah. on it. So basically this is your Syntha 6 um, edge protein, mm -hmm. uh, the six meaning different proteins. So it's a yep. combination of different proteins uh, from fast release to slow release. Mm -hmm. um, so you got a protein matrix of protein concentrate, protein isolate, calcium casein, Michaela casein, milk protein isolate, egg, egg and egg albumin. Yeah, egg yep. whites. Yeah. So. It mixes really nice and creamy, yes. and that's because of the caseins in there, gives that depth and bold fullness to the protein mm -hmm. powder. Uh, the flavours are typical BSN Synthesis Edge flavours, oh, and yeah. now these ones in collaboration with Cold, Rock, Cold Stone, the flavours are really, really nice. Yeah, we've only yeah. tried the one, um, but yeah, it, it left yeah. an impression. Ari's tried the chocolate and he says it's magnificent. It would be, yeah. it would be. It's a really, really rich beautiful German, yeah. that German chocolate. Now, like Adrian said, it's not a, um, this isn't a protein powder that I'd use if you were dieting or no, anything like no, that. No, you know? no, no. Um, because it is, it is only about 50% protein, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's, the rest is made up of carbohydrates and fats. But that's what gives it that nice flavor. Yes. It's an ideal protein for someone who is either um, wants to increase their calories mm -hmm. a little bit in yep. their protein uh, and hasn't got the time or the ability to do it through meals. So this is a perfect protein. Yep. This is also a perfect protein if you actually are then missing meals. Yes. And you want, yep. you know, in the morning you have the time for breakfast, man, uh, two scoops of this and you've got yourself a really yeah, good start to the day. Excellent. Yep. Um, but the flavors are magnificent. Yeah. 
we're gonna have to. I think we should open one up on, that, on like a neighbor, on a review, and then you can give it, give me a breakdown of what you think of the flavors. Uh, we can do that later. Yeah, that'll be yeah. a good idea. Um, but the the pricing is exactly the same as the normal synthesis. Yep. So the the um, this one here, which is the two, just over two kilos, mm -hmm. is seventy nine ninety five. Yep, and this is a two pounds of one point seven, one point one seven kilo to be specific, and that's forty nine ninety five. Yep, yep. So um, yeah, yeah, flavors are beautiful. Yeah, check it out. Um, and someone asked me yesterday if they're going to be limited edition flavors. No, I think I think this is something. This that, is it. This is yeah. This is a standalone product. It's just a standalone product in the synthesis edge, and and. Um, my impression is that they're going to add more flavors. Very much. Going so. There's going to be because with this sort of style of flavoring, there's going to be hundreds of different alternatives you can do. Exactly. That's right. the appeal of the cold stone. That's cold stone thing. You get one base and you can add a thousand flavors to it. That's right. Oh, yeah. Available now in store and online. So check it out, mm -hmm. and we will get you guys next time. Yes. Because I'm going to Europe. Yeah. Did I not, tell you that? Yeah. If you're not wearing like a German hat on the next one, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> well, I'm going yeah. to Russia, yeah. I'm going to Finland, I'm going to Estonia, I'm going to Norway, and I'm going to Denmark. <laughs> okay, Europe. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for listening, right. thanks for viewing, and we will catch you guys next time. If you've got anything in the meantime that you would like us to talk about, uh, you see any interesting test results like the ones we talk about, mm -hmm. send them through to us and we'll be happy to uh, feature yep. and just uh, chat about them. More than happy. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.